so we kick off the national championship game. Chris Bauer, along with Lee Corso and Craig James, we'll hear these guys' final thoughts on the ball game in just a couple of minutes. But first of all, we want to summarize yet another bowl week. I mean, for the players and coaches, these things tend to be an almost endless stream of obligations, press conferences, dumb questions, etc. This week we've had our share of odd situations, including an elephant track controversy. Here are some of the highlights and lowlights. If you lose this ball game, you're opening yourself up for a lot of criticism, not going with the guy that brought you here. You know the old philosophy. Mm -hmm. We have thought press on that. Well, I'm going to be criticized no matter what we do. If we lose, Lee, you know that. <laughs> and you'll be one of the guys. No, I won't. I'm, 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 I'm second guessing you before the game. You'll be leading the charge. No, sir. I'm second guessing you before the game. It's going to be a heck of a football game. And there's no question about it. Our practices have gone good. Only one injury, me. And uh, I hurt my knee. I won't get it shot up on game day. And, uh... <laughs> you come out of retirement? I'm good. If you guys are blocking, I'm coming out, big boy. I'm in from Miami. They're going to need you. I was trying to explain who was going to play quarterback in the league course, so it took me about six hours. <laughs> How tall are you? Because I tell you what, I eat spaghetti off your head. How tall are you? <laughs> Lee's kind of a slow study, as you know. Well, it's hard to get him close. Which one of those is coming? I hope it's the biggest one, so I'm ready. And then where, 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 what hospital will you be going to after that? <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be celebrating after the game. <laughs> <laughs> Just be for real. We have to hop over the elephant tracks. Uh, that'll make make for some interesting play calls. We have to avoid the elephant tracks. Ah, uh, yes, the elephants in the halftime show. This ball kind of takes on the characteristics of this city. Zany, chaotic, unpredictable at times. Let's hope you guys can uh, boil this game down now in the final few hours before kickoff. Give us your checklist as we compare some of the key categories for these teams. Well, Chris, when discussing a winner in this ball game, there's certain areas I'd like to discuss. First of all, up front in the trenches. Now, I like Nebraska here because I think their offensive line will be one of the best in the history. That's the advantage. Quarterback play. I like Nebraska for two reasons. Tommy Frazier, Brooke Barringer. One can run, the other can throw. Special teams. I like Nebraska because of Darren Erstad. He's not only a good punter, he's a long field goal kicker. But now, I like Miami when it comes to the skill people. The reason, their height advantage near the goal line, I think that'll be a great play for them. Now, Hall of Fame coach Bob Devaney of Nebraska told me that they, he thought that Nebraska was the finest football team he had ever seen at Nebraska, and he'd been there over 40 years. I'm picking Nebraska by three points because of what Devaney says, and I think of their team speed. They're a great football team, no question about that. Now, I'm going to buy your checklist. Just right. I explained this last night to about 10,000 people. In the trenches, I'm going to have to go with Nebraska. There's no debating that their offensive line is awesome. Quarterback play, now here's really where it gets kind of tricky here. Nebraska's got some great players, but because of the opportunities man-to-man, -man, Frank Costa gets the nod there. Special teams, Dane Pruitt is 13 of 13 inside the 40-yard line. I really think it comes down to a kick in the ballgame. And home field advantage, there aren't enough checklist points that I could put for that one. They have lost one game, Miami that is, since 1977 at night in the Orange Bowl. It is a different monster. There is not any environment in any playoff, any environment that matches what this does. Where were those 10,000 people, by the way? Uh, I think we all agree that Nebraska is a better team on a neutral field, but you're right, the Orange Bowl is a big, big factor. Now we want to get the thoughts of the senior member of our team on this ball game, but first, we want to flash back to late August. Who will be number one on January 3rd, because the bowl games are on the second this year, except for the Orange Bowl? In the Rose Bowl, Joe Paterno will win his third national title. And Bino Cook joins us now. Happy New Year, Bino. Do you still feel the same way as you did in August? Yes, we said Nebraska would lose on New Year's Day uh, in the Orange Bowl and Penn State would win the national title. And we haven't changed. Miami 31, Nebraska 10. We are rooting in a way for Tom Osborne. We're not rooting for Nebraska. We're rooting for Tom Osborne because if he doesn't win, he's going to be criticized again. 
He now, last year officiating, played a big part in this Orange Bowl, at least according to Nebraska fans, with the ACC officials, or the Big East officials, I should say. Now, what about the officials in this ball game? They're Big Ten officials tonight. Yeah. First, Chris, officials are politicians, and these are Big Ten officials, and Nebraska will not get any breaks. Let's go back to 1991. Penn State, Miami, playing during the regular season in the Orange Bowl. Big Ten officials. Three penalties against Penn State for 15 yards, 11 penalties against Miami for 124 yards. If Nebraska is able to overcome the home field, the Big Ten officials, and a very good Miami team, they deserve to be number one. But it's not going to happen. All right, Pino. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for joining us. Let's hope the officials don't play a part in this ball game. We'll be back here later on Sunday Sports Day from Miami. But coming up next, face-off. Who was the best athlete of 1994?